Hi, this podcast is going to walk you through some of the steps of the bioinformatics and evolution article project. Um, I love this activity because it actually gets you using some of the same databases and tools that scientists use when they're studying evolutionary relationships or getting information about an organism's gene. Um, so the whole premise of this lab came from a cartoon. I didn't write the initial lab, <clears throat> but I've modified it and updated it um, because these websites with the databases keep changing. So this comes from an old Calvin and Hobbes cartoon where um, he was doing an experiment for <clears throat> or a project for school and it was about animals and relationships. You can see bats are and bugs because he thought they were the same because they flew. So anyway, so here's what you're going to do. Um, in studying evolutionary relationships, you can look at structures, but now scientists really look at DNA. And you could also look at proteins, right? Because the DNA makes the protein. So this first table um, has you compare birds, bats, and mammals and look at different traits. And I did that table for you to save you some time. So that's all scientists initially had to go on when you were trying to classify organisms and look at their evolutionary relationships. Since the 1950s, scientists have been able to sequence proteins and also look at their structures. So I like to start off with proteins because I like to look at the structure of the protein as well. Um, ultimately, you probably would go and look at the nucleotide sequence of the gene, but we're going to start with the protein sequence, and we're going to use hemoglobin beta chain. So when you do that search, um, you're going to wind up at this website. <clears throat> Here's hemoglobin beta, and there is a ton of information. So I guide you through, and you should look at the headings, and that's where you're going to get a lot of the info. <clears throat> it gives you the function. Um, it compares it in some other organisms or what source of what was the source of the information about hemoglobin beta chain? This names and taxonomy, if you look down here, it shows you the complete classification of Homo sapiens, because that's who this specimen was from. This database also contains hemoglobin beta subunits from lots of organisms, and that's what you're going to do today is <clears throat> compare those other organisms to look at the evolutionary relationships. I love this. It shows you where in the cell you find that protein. Um, it gives you, if it's a human gene or a human protein, what's the pathology, where are the disorders involved, um, natural variants, here's sickle cell anemia. And then here, I like this section, PTM, post-translational modifications or processing. And we've talked about that. So here is an example, the initiator, initiator methionine gets removed, or different um, residue means amino acid. So some get glycosylated. This also tells you what else happens to that amino acid. And then if you keep scrolling down, you get to where is this tissue expressed in the body? What particular cells are expressed in the tissues? And then here's what I really like. Now we get to, here's a nice, um, 3D structure of the protein. So if you hover over it, um, it will actually give you which particular amino acid. If you click on it, oh, you can magnify it. But this was the beta chain, and you can see that there were <clears throat> four chains um, all together. So you're interested just in the beta chain. So I'm going to. Go with something new all the time. You can kind of see the bonding in between as you magnify things. Um, so that's kind of like we looked at the um, molecular modeling for the, the drug design workshop. So I like with being able to look at the protein, which is why we started with protein. So there's a ton more information on there. And as you go through, I've got made tons of screenshots to help you with this. So one section um, that you're going to look at shows you the amino acid sequence as you get further and further down. And these letters all stand for a different amino acid because you have to give them different letters because 
let's say alanine is A, but what do you do with asparagine? So you can't just use the first letter. So you get a one letter abbreviation, so they all fit when you give the whole sequence. But sometimes you have no idea like what would E be. So I have a chart for you on your lab. But you'll see they number them also. So you know what number amino acid it is. Um, they give you information about the secondary structure right here, right? Where on that 3D structure will the term caused by hydrogen bonding? Where were there any beta strands? No beta strands here in the secondary structure. The hemoglobin, but lots of helices. So you can see it's 147 amino acids long. So here's a table that tells you what is um, L stand for leucine. They could have figured out. What about W? That's tryptophan. So it asks you some questions about that. And then ultimately, what you're going to do and where you can split this lab up with someone else is you're going to get the amino acid sequence from six different organisms. So two birds, two bats, and two non-bat mammals. And when you get that amino acid sequence, what you're going to do is go to a website whose job is to align these different sequences. And it shows you similarities and differences between the amino acid sequence from one organism, query means what you ask it to search for, and then here's the second organism. So it explains what all these little dots mean and what identity means, what similarity means. Um, identity means what, when you're comparing the amino acid sequence of one organism to another, is it an identical amino acid? Or if it's similar, <clears throat> then it means it's a different amino acid, but it has the same properties. So the protein might fold the same. So once you compare each of the different organisms to each other, you're going to fill out this distance matrix table. What percent identity were, what percent identical were those sequences from bat one to bat two, from bat one to mammal one, et cetera. And then we want to go to this phylogeny website and have it try to make a cladogram comparing those six organisms. So what you're going to do is take the amino acid sequence of all six, paste it into the box below, and here's my example um, of the six I picked. You can't pick these. So I'm going to copy them. I'm going to go to this website where you, where it will make the cladogram. I'm going to paste them in. If you notice, it has greater than Mavis. That helps me identify if we need the greater than. We need a space in between. So when I scroll down, I'm just going to, I don't have to change anything. I hit submit. Now, once I hit submit, I'll know it's working if I start to see this. These bars going across, or I see it starting to think and make a cladogram. If you don't see this and get an error message, that's a problem. So it'll tell you what the error was. You might have a different number of amino acids. So you should look at the sequence and see, do they both start and end with the same thing? If I have an extra one somewhere, maybe I can cut one off of another one. Maybe I can get rid of the organism that's causing the problem. So you can email me if you have any problems, but when you go to select those hemoglobin beta chains, you should try to make sure that they're at the same length, like 146 or 147. So here's my tree, my cladogram, and these numbers have meanings, and you're going to read about them. One thing to remember, though, is so you can see sparrow and condor are most closely, are closely related. They're not very closely related to crocodile. And I, to see who they're most closely related to, I go backwards. Here's the common ancestor of sparrows and condors. And then mallards, is next most closely related to those two. Here's the common ancestor of all of those. But these things swivel. So a sparrow isn't more closely related to a mallard than a, than a condor. Because I could rotate this, and the condor could wind up next to the mallard. So you really have to go down to look at the common ancestor. OK, 
So that's what you should see um, when you get your category. So the next thing you're going to do, and this down here just says if that site's not working and all else fails, go back and try this, and this always works. You don't get the numbers there, but you do get a nice relationship. It's not as nice as a cladogram, but you can still see common ancestors and which organisms are most closely related to each other. So the next, this is how to read a phylogenetic tree or cladogram. You should read through that. So the next part is going to have you do something called a blast search, where you take one organism sequence, and then you say, okay, compare this to all the other organisms you have in your database. And it will give you back results. It lines them up like this. It gives you a score of how identical they are. And so it's going to ask you to take the top 10 most identical species to your crocodile entry that you put up here. This is, and it tells you a little bit about what the scores mean. And so basically, the whole premise of this was how closely related are birds to reptiles? And in fact, what you'll discover is that birds really are types of reptiles. There's no longer a separate class avian. Birds are under that classification. Next thing is what if you want to compare genes? This is a little warm up activity at first. You're not going anywhere, you're just analyzing the table. So I gave you all the examples for using this gene, CABCH, is one of the genes that make the enzymes that are part of the first two steps of glycolysis. So lots of organisms have this. So this explains how do you find the sequence of a particular gene. So again, I have lots of screenshots. It gives an order, tells you exactly what to do. You do not have to pick this gene. You can pick any of the other genes or proteins that you work with, but you want to compare the genes. So I gave you a list of, at the bottom of this that will show you what is the possibility that you could use, or you could use the example that I gave you. But again, you can see you're going to be getting base sequences. This tells you how to compare them. And then you're going to go back to that site, and you're also going to get, oh, so this is again, this is showing you comparing the uh, nucleoside sequences, and you can see there's been a substitution here, here there's a deletion, so you're going to get the same kind of information, similar information, like when you compared the two um, amino acid sequences of the state of hemoglobin chain from different organisms. And then once you have several organisms, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to paste it in the website, the phylogeny website, put them all in the box. And then here's my cladogram comparing that enzyme in different organisms. And C. gallus is a chicken. So you can see it's not as closely related as these others. Here's Homo sapien and Pan. That's a um, Pan Sondrides is a um, chip. Here's a rat, so you can see rats, these are all very closely related. And then Canis lupus is a dog. So these make sense, these are all mammals, and then here is a bird. So you'll want to make sure your category makes sense. So here's a list of possible um, genes and proteins. These are general classes. These are very specific ones that we've seen this year. And then make sure you stop here, because we're not going to get to the rest of this activity um, this time. So this would be great to do with someone. And by doing with someone, it doesn't mean I'll do the top, you do the bottom. But then it won't make sense. This is very, very sequential. What would make sense is at the same time to work on it and make sure that you can find things and that you're getting the identical things on your screen when you're doing your searches. Okay, that's great. So this is our last assignment of the year. Congratulations, you've made it. Well, let's just turn this in, you've made it. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.